Hello everyone, welcome back to Noteworthy ENT. Let us discuss the anatomy of pterygopalatine fossa in this lecture. I feel this topic is not given a lot of attention even in our postgraduate teaching. So it required a lot of research and studying to put together this lecture. It would be really helpful if you appreciate the hard work by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now let's get straight to the topic. Pterygopalatine fossa is a pyramidal shaped fossa which is located in the head and neck region and it is bounded superiorly by the orbit, more specifically the posterior part of the orbit also known as the apex of orbit and the body of sphenoid bone and anteriorly it is bounded by the posterior border of maxilla and posteriorly it is bounded again by the sphenoid bone more specifically the pterygoid process of sphenoid bone and also by the some part of greater wing of sphenoid bone. Now let us understand this better with the help of this diagram. This is a sagittal section of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now let us orient ourselves first this being the superior part, inferior part anterior part and the posterior part. Now this inverted pyramidal shaped fossa is bounded anteriorly by the superomedial part of maxilla. That is it is placed against the medial and superior part of the back of maxilla and bounded superiorly by the apex of the orbit and some part of body of sphenoid. Posteriorly by the pterygoid process and some part of the greater wing of sphenoid. Now again another diagram this from the front and you can see this being the pterygopalatine fossa it is closely related to the posterior part of the nasal cavity and it opens medially into the nasal cavity and laterally it communicates with the infratemporal fossa. So pterygopalatine fossa medially communicates with the nasal cavity laterally with the infratemporal fossa. Now coming to the osteology, it is mainly related to three bones. These three being maxilla, sphenoid and the palatine bone. Now as I have already discussed, this being the right maxilla, the pterygopalatine fossa is related to the back of the maxilla that is posterior part of the maxilla in the superior and medial part. Now coming to sphenoid bone. Now sphenoid is a very complex bone. Let us understand this better with a simplified diagram. This being the body of sphenoid and it has two wings namely the lesser wing and the greater wing of sphenoid. From the greater ring, there is a continuation downwards and this is known as the pterygoid process. And this pterygoid process along with some part of the greater ring forms the posterior wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now coming to the floor of pterygopalatine fossa, as you can see in this diagram, the maxilla, it bulges posteriorly and the pterygoid process they also have a inclination forwards so the floor becomes narrow and this floor is formed by the pyramidal process of palatine bone. Now we will discuss this better when we understand the anatomy of the palatine bone. Now this palatine bone is a L shaped bone and being L shaped it has a perpendicular plate or a vertical plate and a horizontal plate. Now this is in close relation with the nasal cavity as well as the pterygopalatine fossa. Now with this being the posterior part of nasal cavity, the horizontal plate forms the floor of the posterior part of the nasal cavity and, and this perpendicular plate it forms the posterior part of the lateral nasal wall. Now important thing to note is that from the palatine bone there extends a process laterally which is known as the pyramidal process and this pyramidal process it forms the floor of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now as you can see from this diagram the perpendicular plate of palatine bone also forms the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. Now 
and one important thing to note is that this perpendicular plate of palatine bone superiorly it divides into two processes the anterior one being the orbital process and the posterior one being the sphenoidal process the, the orbital process it has relation with the orbit and as the name suggests the sphenoid process has a relation with the sphenoid bone and between these two processes there is a notch which is known as the sphenopalatine notch now the body of sphenoid bone it covers this notch and converts it into a foramen and this is known as sphenopalatine foramen now as we can see this sphenopalatine foramen is the communication between the pterygopalatine fossa and the nasal cavity and also the pterygopalatine fossa it communicates laterally with the infratemporal fossa through a fissure known as pterygomaxillary fissure now we'll discuss all the communications in detail so this being the pterygopalatine fossa it communicates with the orbit through a fissure known as inferior orbital fissure which is located near the junction of roof and anterior wall so orbital communication is through inferior orbital fissure now as we have discussed medially it communicates with the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen and to the middle cranial fossa that is posteriorly it communicates through a foramen in the superior part of the posterior wall which is known as foramen rotundum now this foramen is a very important foramen because the v2 that is the maxillary nerve exits the cranial cavity through this foramen into the pterygopalatine fossa and also posteriorly there is a canal which is known as pterygoid canal or the vidian canal which communicates pterygopalatine fossa with the foramen lacerum and an important nerve that is vidian nerve traverses through this canal also there is a communication posterior inferiorly to the nasopharynx and this is known as the pharyngeal canal or the palatovaginal canal also it communicates inferiorly with the oral cavity through a canal which is known as greater palatine canal and as already discussed it communicates laterally to the infratemporal fossa with a fissure known as pterygomaxillary fissure i'll quickly recap the communications it communicates to the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure to the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen to the middle cranial fossa with the foramen rotundum to the foramen lacerum through the vidian canal to the nasopharynx by the pharyngeal canal or the palatovaginal canal to the oral cavity by greater palatine canal and to the infratemporal fossa by the pterygomaxillary fissure coming to the important contents the important contents are the maxillary nerve and its branches this maxillary nerve as i have already told exits the cranial cavity through the foramen rotundum and comes in to the pterygopalatine fossa and also the vidian nerve this is the nerve of pterygoid canal comes into the pterygopalatine fossa through the vidian canal and another important structure that is pterygopalatine ganglion it is attached to the maxillary nerve and it provides secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal glands and also an important artery that is maxillary artery which is a terminal branch of external carotid artery it comes into the pterygopalatine fossa through the infratemporal fossa and an important branch that is sphenopalatine artery 
it exits the pterygopalatine fossa through the sphenopalatine foramen and comes into the nasal cavity and this is also known as the artery of epistaxis. So this was all about the pterygopalatine fossa. Thank you.